So I'm trying to start out here <clears throat> with uh, this essential idea, basically trying to give you the concept and then bring you some details. So hopefully that'll help you understand some of this stuff. But uh, we talk about neurons and synapses. Neurons, we know those are the uh, cells that carry the messages. And synapses are the gaps between one neuron and say another. So this is another one. Kind of trying to draw it look like your hand. And then it leads to another. So we're talking about messages, signals going from one neuron to the next. And the synapse in between modulate. And that's kind of a fancy word, but it adjusts, it adjusts uh, the message, either making it stronger or weaker. But that's the overall view of what we're, what we got to get out of this. Um, this section 6.5 is transmission of these signals, and they are adjusted at the synapse, and that can be influenced uh, by different chemicals, drugs, antidepressants, and so forth. And it's really kind of interesting. Um, here you have an electric signal. It's all electric. You know, your body is electric uh, when it comes down to the nerves itself. But then when it comes here, we're looking at a chemical signal. So it goes from electric to chemical back to electric. And uh, because it does that, it makes it a lot more complicated. Uh, so you need to know the uh, the parts. Uh, here we have the, you know, the middle of any <coughs> cell. We got our nucleus, and we got our cell body here. These are the dendrites. Look like little branches coming off. Down below is our axon, and these kind of little bubble things are called myelin sheaths, M-Y-E-L-I-N, and these are uh, the axon terminals, and uh, you know later on we'll look at it and uh, this is where you'll find the synapses. And then this will make connection to another uh, So the saltatory conduction is kind of cool sounding. We're saltatory. So normally, uh, or just with a regular neuron, more primitive neuron before we evolved more complex neurons, the signal had to just move along the axon, go cell by cell, you know, right along that tissue. It's called continuous. But through evolution, we have those myelin sheaths, and what the signal does, it skips like a rock skipping on a lake, and it's a lot faster, so it's way faster. Think about a rock traveling under the water versus skipping it or over the water. Uh, so, yeah, saltatory here is much quicker, and that's from the myelin sheaths. Myelin sheaths. So yeah, just label that. So you know those are your myelin sheaths. And uh, funny bit of oak. Oak have nodes of run VA. That's kind of fun. Uh, and yeah, here we have the action potential. It's kind of giving you a close up. That was a cool image that I threw in there. So boom, jumping. Yeah, uh, I mean, normally the outside is negative, the inside is positive, so, uh, uh, no, sorry, the inside is negative, outside is positive, so here you have the uh, depolarization, now it's going to jump, this is going to switch to negative on the outside, positive on the inside, and then so on and so forth. You see part two of that, you see the skipping, and these are cells, these, you can see it with their own little nucleus, those uh myelin sheaths it's like insulation yeah you think of it like that it does work a lot like insulation and something like 
a multiple sclerosis you probably heard of that eats away this myelin coating uh, and you get problem, problems with nerve signal conduction. So there has to be a, a membrane potential uh, keeping that electrical diff charge difference and comes from the sodium potassium pump. So you have three sodiums going out for every two potassiums coming in. So that they're both positive, but you end up with more positive on the outside. That makes it positive. Less positives on the inside, that's going to make it negative. So on your paper, three sodium out, two in, three sodiums out, two in. And remember, we're using energy for that because it's going against the concentration grain. So this is not diffusion. To connect it to other things, let's make a point. Act, um, sorry, active transport. This is an example of active transport. And you can see on the IV test, uh, when you see the ATP there, that's, that's a tip for you. And it is a pretty cool picture. You see the normal, nice and smooth. You got the positive outside, negative inside. <clears throat> and then along comes the action potential. And look, sodium rushes in. And all of a sudden it becomes less positive. That turns it negative. And then you have a little sodium go out to restore that pos uh, that negativity on the inside. So a bunch of those, remember those are positives. So really you got to remember, you know, this will come up in different ways. The action potential comes sodium in, then potassium out. Sodium in, potassium out. Nah, in, out. I don't know, I gotta give there some kind of mnemonic for that. Sorry. Uh, but that, I think it kind of helps you visualize a little bit. Yeah. You see these channels, voltage gated channels. So what are you rushing? Uh, so it's called depolarization, what we just saw. So again, normally positive, uh, positive situation outside, negative on the inside. That's polarized. So depolarized is when you change that. So here you see all the sodiums rush in, makes it positive in there. Uh, from a relatively, um, relatively negative charge to a relatively positive charge. Okay, relatively negative in here, then goes relatively positive. So negative to positive. Uh, in here, just give it a nice, as your X potential is traveling along, you have this depolarization event, depolar, I'll say depol, depolarization, I can't see this too well, but depolar, and guess what, it ha what happens after it depolarizes, it repolarizes, you see that right here? Repolarizes. Um, that's that. Oh, so maybe make a note. Perfect. Sodium in. Check that out. Write that in. Boom. Just a practice. Boom. Practice. And you remember what's leaving during repolarization? You sure do. Let's use a different color. Potassium. Woo, leaving. Potassium. Remember, all these are positive. Uh, actually, I should use different colors more often. It's pretty sweet. So sodium in, pause out and resting. Remember that resting phase? Make a note here. You have that active transport, uh, sodium, potassium pump happening. So during that whole resting phase, you're always sodium out, uh, potassium in. During that whole process. And see propagation. Uh, so we have this is the action potential up here. And this right here is that threshold. And I'm uh, oh, sorry, this is the repolarization step. And right here's the trigger point. This is when trigger point, which is the threshold. 
Uh, and right here, negative 70, that's a good one to remember, negative 70, that's your resting potential. As you can see, this triggering point is about negative 55, so that's to go from negative 70 millivolts to about negative 55 in order for this nerve signal to fire. Going up, going up very briefly, positive, boom, action potential, and then you got it coming back. So, you remember what, what ion is coming in here? Sodium, and here, potassium is leaving. So sodium entering, potassium leaving. And I was using yellow for that. Potassium leaves. Sorry, it looks pretty sloppy. So, oh, here we go, there we go. So this is a presynaptic neuron coming in. And this is the axon terminal right at the end, right here at the end of, uh, see it here, it's showing you at the end of this neuron leading up to uh, this body right here is being depicted there close up. Uh, and these are, see these little bubbles, these are called vesicles. And they hold very important molecules inside which are called neurotransmitters. Uh, abbreviated NT. And uh, you see all these neurotransmitters coming across, and this is the post synaptic neuron. And these neurotransmitters are coming over there and uh, going to extend that signal. Okay. So here we have a little more detailed view. So we got the X potential. You see all these mitochondria right here get to that later but um so the synaptic uh oh the depolarization from the x potential causes these calcium channels to open so see this calcium that's going to go in there and then that causes these synaptic vesicles like we saw in that earlier diagram they come and fuse with the membrane they'll open up if you move to the uh sorry that's sloppy membrane and fuse and of course these neurotransmitters get released and they now what's that called when molecules move from a high concentration to a low concentration it's called diffusion so out or diffuse in this context or in this sentence so they diffuse across the gap and they go to these receptors and they are specific and that will lead to some interesting consequences later on. We're going to look. And the sodium channels, uh, these open. So we have these sodium channels uh, open. And that propagates the signal. Once sodium rushes in, boom, you got another signal going. Like we saw, you know, that's how that depolarization occurs. And enzymes in the synaptic gap. A break down the neurotransmitter. We <clears throat> looked at a Parkinson's the other day. So M O A and C O M T enzymes that break that down. Uh, and that takes a lot of energy to uh, to do this. So you see all these mitochondria in these cells. I'm trying to find a histology slide and we can look at this. So. We see all these, remember about negative 55 is what we're looking at. And that's what we have on this graph too. It's new negative, how was that? Uh, 64, negative 60 about, not quite longer, not gonna do it. It's gotta go above that threshold. Causes more depolarization, the more the stimulus, uh, the greater the stimulus is -ation. and uh, this is our threshold, we're at negative 55. And uh, this here, yeah, action potential. It's triggered once you go over that threshold. And 
acetylcholine, one of our most popular, well-known, steady neurotransmitters. See the vesicle fuse travels across, makes the stimulation. This is a special enzyme here breaks it down, and then it goes back into the uh, back into the vesicle. Pretty cool. Uh, so that is the enzyme and breaks down. Breaks down that enzyme. So that's good. You want that, uh, or else you're gonna have constant stimulation. So it's got to be process stimulation and then break down. And this is interesting. I actually bought some of this neonicotinoid uh, pesticide the other day to help my tree is infected with these bugs. So they said if you treat it with this, it goes into the whole tree and whatever bug your insect tries to dig in and drink the sap also drinks this toxin and will kill it. So I'm trying to do some less invasive stuff. Also, these are kind of implicated. You've all heard of honeybee hives collapsing. So I'm trying to hold off on it. I don't want to kill the bees. I want to save my tree. Trees or bees? You know, both. We need both. So I'm going to try to go the natural route with my uh, special neem oil and detergent. Save it. But I'll let you know. But you take this toxin and see how it blocks all these receptors so the acetylcholine can't stimulate so basically it causes paralysis in the insect and you may this word you might you might uh have a familiarity with especially now with vaping but nicotine you see kids weren't smoking as much now with vaping it's becoming more of an issue some I've been worried about for a while, but nicotine works in a similar way. It blocks these acetylcholine receptors. This is what you know people get when they smoke. They get this uh, this this blockage, this you know effect of their synapses, and it's been used for a long time. Nicotine is a pesticide, but it's really toxic for humans. So they came up with these similar ones that more specifically affect insects. So we'll say. They're more specific to insects, so they're not as likely to hurt humans or dogs, just insects. Um, and uh, basically, you get paralysis, shuts down the nervous system. This is an oscilloscope. We looked at this before, um, but here we have our action potential. Here's our threshold at negative 55. And this is time in milliseconds, and this is millivolts, millivolts. So make sure you, I can analyze this. Oh, here, remember, so, sorry, so, sodium is rushing in, sodium in, and here we got potassium out. Ah, I just like to remind you of that as much as I can. So here is... Some social effects. So here we have beneficial uses of these drugs because we we do need them. Um, medical, I think, coffee, you know, Starbucks. Think about that. Um, moderate use of say red wine. This has been through human history very popular, very very integral to a lot of our cultural stuff, which is what makes alcohol especially so insidious, so accepted. People end up abusing it, and we we go along this continuum. Um, we're showing it's not actually beneficial, really, but it's non-problematic. So negligible health or social effects. You know, maybe greater use of wine or some kind of alcohol or marijuana. But then we start leading into problematic um, use where we start to see some negative consequences on individuals, families, like and these are the examples, DUIs. Um, when I was a kid, they really started to become uh, more serious. The law started to really crack down, and it was a real real problem, real stigma to drinking and driving, uh, which is, is still to this day. And uh, the last part is we have, you know, chronic dependence. This is when 
Ah, sorry, that's so terrible. Dependence. Where you do have family breakdown and people lose jobs and get really sick, die of liver disease or other sorts of things from the drug use. And this is a, a more fun one here. You maybe heard of Botox. Uh, so this is the normal action of uh, these uh, acetylcholine, what we've been looking at earlier. Here we have, uh, yeah, this is the uh, acetylcholine right here, our neurotransmitter. And it goes here and it stimulates. So here we have stimulation. Just stimulation of the muscle. So the muscles can move to my face. Well, over here, we have the action of the Botox. So the action, uh, botulinum is the name of it, botulinum toxin, AKA Botox. So it's interesting, it gets, it mimics the acetylcholine and uh, it actually gets taken in. Um, so this would be the receptor that takes in the toxin. So the uh, botulinum toxin receptor. And then it comes in and it basically uh, breaks the proteins. So as the botulinum toxin is breaking up these proteins. Uh, as we can see, these proteins here are the ones that break open, allow the synaptic vesicle to go get broken open and released. So the, with the botulinum, uh, botulinum toxin, you can't break these open. So these stay intact. The acetylcholine stays in and you get no stimulation. And that leads to paralysis. So that's mild paralysis. We have Botox treatment usually in the face. Uh, the muscles don't move as much, so it smooths out the wrinkles. Without the muscles there to pull the skin to contract, the wrinkles don't show up. Um, if you got a heavier dose, it would cause more muscle paralysis and then uh, basically you would suffocate.